let's begin by creating a new project. We can create a new project from File, New Project. This will bring up the home screen. I'm going to call the new project Rollerball. The next thing we need to do is set the destination or path to our new project. I'm going to put this new project on my desktop. At this point, it's worth noting that we can have our new project use default settings for either a 2D project or a 3D project. We will choose 3D. And then I will click on Create Project to make a new project. We now have our new project with a new empty scene. Before creating anything in the new scene, we need to save our scene. We can save our scene by going to File, Save Scene, or by using the keyboard shortcut. I'm going to save this scene in the Assets directory in a new folder called Underscore Scenes. The underscore is optional. I use it to sort this folder to the top of my project window. Now I'm going to call the scene Minigame. We can now see in our Scenes folder the scene called Minigame. Let's create our game board or play field. To do this, we will use a stock Unity plane. We can create this plane from either Game Object, 3D Object Plane, or from inside the Hierarchy view using the Create menu. Rename this Game Object Ground. We can do this by either selecting the Game Object and using the Enter or Return key to allow editing, or by clicking on the Game Object twice, slowly. Type in the new name and hit Enter or Return to confirm this change. Reset the Transform component using the context-sensitive gear menu in the upper right. This will place the game object at the location of 000 in our scene. This point is known as the origin point of the world, and this is where all of the coordinates in the scene are calculated from. Now, with the game object selected and the cursor over the scene view, type the F key or choose Frame Selected from the Edit menu to see the entire game object in the scene view. Looking at our current scene, we can see grid lines indicating the plane at origin. For the purposes of this project, we will turn them off. Select the Gizmos menu in the scene view and deselect Show Grid. We need to change the scale of the ground plane. We can do this in a number of ways. We can use the Scale tool, simply grab the axis handle you want to change and drag the handle rescaling the plane. We can click and drag on the title of the fields we want to change, or we can type a number directly into the field we want to change. You can tab between fields and hit Enter or Return to confirm your choice. Now remember, a plane has no volume, and scale does not work on the y-axis. There will be no change unless you go into negative numbers. In this case, the plane, which is a single-sided object, will simply face the other direction. If you place a plane in the scene and you can't see it, Check your orientation between the plane and the camera, and make sure that you have the correct value for the y-axis of scale. This is usually the value of 1. Let's create our player object. In this assignment, our player object will be a Unity Sphere. From the Hierarchy Create menu, select Sphere. Rename the sphere Player. Reset the transform to make sure it's at origin. Select Edit, Frame Selected, or use the F key while the cursor is over the scene view to focus our scene view camera on our game object. See how the sphere is buried in the plane? This is because both game objects are in the exact same location in the scene, the origin point, or 000 on the X, Y, and Z axes. We need to move the player's sphere up until it rests on the plane. All Unity primitive objects, cubes, spheres, capsules, have a standard size. They are either 1x1x1 one by one by one or 1x2x1 one by one Unity units. As such, we simply lift the player object up by half a unit in the y-axis, and we know it is lying perfectly on top of the plane. If we look at the game view, we can see that the player game object is lit, and it casts a shadow on the plane. All new Unity scenes come with a default skybox and a directional light to represent the sun, so we don't need to worry about setting up any default lighting. 
What could be improved, however, is the white player sphere on the white background. Let's add some color to our background, so there is some contrast between the player and the playfield. To add color or texture to a model, we need to use a material. We won't go into the details of materials now, and we won't be using any textures. We will simply use a standard material to add color to the objects in our scene. First, let's create a new folder in our project to hold our materials. We can do this by using the project's Create menu and selecting Folder. Rename this folder Materials. With the Materials folder selected, use the project's Create menu again, and this time select Material. Note how the material was created in the Materials folder. This is because we had the folder selected when we chose to create our new material. Rename this material Background. Select the material, and under Main Maps, the first property is Albedo. Click on the Albedo's color field to open a color picker. Change the color to a nice dark shade of blue. In our case, I will use the RGB values of 0, 32, and 64. For a preview of the material, make sure that the preview window is open. To apply the texture to the plane, simply select the material in the project view and drag it onto the plane in the scene view. Now the player stands out on the dark blue background. I want to make one additional change that will help us later in this project. I want to rotate the main directional light so that we have better lighting on our player. Select the directional light and in the transform component, change the transform rotation on the y axis to 60. This will give better shape to our player's sphere. Now we have a player game object and a background playfield.